welcome to the Metal Voice. It's been 11 wow. years. Yeah. We've had, we've had Wolf on. Don't get in us wrong, Mark. We've had Wolf on many, uh, many, many times. Tons of times. And we go, you know, we got to go back to Mark. We haven't had him in 11 years. Mark Pernillo, except. Well, one of my fun. favorite interviews was in the, you know, over 13 years we've been doing the show was with you and Mark, or you and Peter, sorry, that day, uh, Stalingrad tour here in Montreal. It was a great interview, and uh, you guys are a great bunch of guys. And, and now we're talking, you know, 14 years in the band, your sixth LP with them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe it. Quite Humanoid. Run. Humanoid to be released April 26. On Napalm Records. This is the 17th. Can you believe it? The 17th studio album. Crazy. I'll let Alan begin. Go ahead, Alan. I mean, let's just start off. What a job on the lyrics. You know, they're topical. They're but there's some, you know, some songs are just universal. It just every every album you you write the lyrics, it just it just enjoy enjoy to listen to. It's a uh, it's a challenge to find things to write about, you know. Anymore, yeah. you, you, you try not to rehash the same thing over and over again. But uh, it, you know, we luckily we uh, seem to come up with these topics. So, I, I, I know in the past when we used to speak to Gabby, she used to always always have her hand in there, right? Like sort yeah. of, and I think you even told us that. But now you're completely free of that. So, do you feel that you have a lot more space? Less of an editor looking um, over your shoulder. I've always enjoyed Gabby's input. So, you know, she's a she's a very smart woman. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. really well read. You should see her library. So you know, you know <laughs> how she comes up with all these things. So. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I never have free reign because it always gets edited. You know, it's. Andy's going to change things on me. Wolf's going to change things on me, you know, but it's, it, uh, it's, it's like, I, I'm just like thinking to myself, it's never going to be free reign. You know, you, you come up, you write, you write stuff and it's the same for them, you know, for everything that we do, every, every, nothing's ever finished until it goes to press. It can always That's change. That's okay. That's okay too. That's all right. Well, look, well, let's talk about some topics. Me and Alan were just talking about the topics on the new <laughs> album. All right, let's, let's. AI seems to be the big thing today, right? Yeah, Humanoid. Yeah. I mean, are we talking about the Terminator here? What are we talking about? I robot. Are we talking How about a, gonna go? How an AI gonna cleaning out? machine to clean our vacuum our house? Like well, that's what I said. I was I was thinking more like the Borg. Actually, I'm, mm. I was a big <laughs> Star Trek fan, and uh, those those seem to be the worst humanoids to be encountered. Because they want to make you one too, so. Uh, but where the whole idea was just you know this was Wolf's baby when he came up with the title for the song and wrote the music and put the ball in my court, and I had to come up with a way to way to make it palatable, you know. Um, but yeah, I tried to incorporate as many ideas into it without making it too crazy. You know, I mean, let's let's face it. This whole AI thing that's going on is is insane. Where are we going? Yeah. Who knows? Well, we've got uh, Elon Musk just put a implant in somebody's brain. And now he can play chess without moving his hands on on his computer. What's next? Um, you have programs that write lyrics. You have programs that write music. You have AI programs that it, uh, will mimic your voice, and you don't have to sing anymore. Like, yeah. Where are we going? What are we going to do? <laughs> It'll be Mark Danilo sings Taylor Swift songs. You yeah, know? No. <laughs> AI. Not that. AI version. AI version. Um, well, that's the collective, right? The Borg is the collective. The Borg. Right? Yes. You, They're the collective. Resistance is futile. Resistance is futile. <laughs> what, what about... You know, and it's interesting because you talk about the humanoid, but then you have Frankenstein, which was probably AI in its infancy, in, right? In its in its original form, <laughs> <laughs> taking a brain and putting it to someone else's body. Whose idea was yeah. that? Uh, well, it was it was a working title, and we tried a couple of different ideas, but nothing seemed to sound as good as Frankenstein. 
I came up with mm -hmm. a, a couple of different things. I wrote, I wrote like two other songs on that piece of music and nothing fit like Frankenstein. So I said, screw it. Let's, it's going to be Frankenstein, but I want to tell the story from the, uh, from the point of view of the monster, not oh. the people that are scared of him, not the doctor, not Igor or, or whoever. Uh, I want the monster's point of view. And what does he know? He didn't know anything. He just wakes up and goes, who the hell am I? <laughs> yeah. Who made Where me? Where am I? What is this? And why does everyone hate me? <laughs> like AI, yeah, like the AI you. Borg Terminator, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I see that as a kind of a sister song to Monster Man off a of Russian roulette. Yeah, and I, right? I mean, that's a song that I can't wait to hear live. I think this is going to go down. Uh, yeah, I, I, we're definitely going to do it live. So it should be a lot of fun. And then, you know, diving into sin, us being here in Montreal, Quebec, I, I, I heard that the poutine drives you insane, but it's the routine drives you insane. So, Yeah, <laughs> routine. The routine, the poutine drives you insane. Good, it could very well. What about uh, Man Up? Uh, this oh, To me, this sounds song. like that classic gang vocal uh, except vibe, I guess. Yeah, well, that, that was a, a kind of a, I was one of the, I think it was the first thing I wrote. And I wrote the lyrics and I just sent it to Wolf. And uh, it was more, more of a pep talk, if anything else, for me. Um, <laughs> get back on the horse and let's get this going. All right. Yeah, lyrically, I can see where it's a follow up to, uh, you know, Sucks to Be You or Hole in the Head. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's one, one of my faves on the album. I mean, life's hard. It's an age old truth. Uh, man yeah, man makes plans and God laughs, you know? Yeah, man. Isn't that the truth? How would you describe the album, the sound, for all the people who haven't? Of course, most people haven't heard it, but how would you describe it to somebody? Okay, this is my new album. This is coming out soon. It sounds like. Classic except. That's well, what I, classic yeah. Mark Tornillo except or classic Udo except? Um, well, a little of both, I think. All right. I, I don't think the band has strayed that far from from what it was in the 80s. You know, different members, obviously, but I think the sound is still, you know, you put it on, you you know that's Wolf Hoffman. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, no, there's no doubt about it. So, but I mean, I you know, it's... It's a classic metal album without trying to be too redundant, you know, and try to make things interesting. Keep it's it ain't broke, so don't fix it. Just, yeah, yeah. just refresh it. And a song like Ravages of Time even takes me back to the their earlier, except for the the late seventies. So uh it's got that kind of feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, breaker album. Yeah, around there, yeah, or yeah. earlier even. So uh Straight up, Jack. I mean, that's uh, what's that? Except answer to ACDC's "Have a Drink on Me." Yeah, that could have been a TT Quick song. I think. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think what alcohol was not mentioned in that song. <laughs> <laughs> I think you covered them all. Yeah, and 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 keep your story short while you're at it. You know, <laughs> don't beat around a bush. Give it to me straight. <laughs> do, do do you find because "Accept" is still relevant and "Udo" still relevant that you're kind of both? upping your own game you know it's it's sort of like it's it's the comp competition of it all little, seems little to make create better music yeah i mean it's well, natural uh, you know i i suppose i mean i really don't think about that but you know you could look at it that way i'm sure some people do so people be saying that now about uh kk's priest and and judas mm -hmm. priest same thing uh, yeah we just saw that we saw, saw kk and ripper on the on the monsters of rock cruise man they were amazing killing it yeah i think that's a great point i mean that's a great analogy because priest's new album is incredible kk's yep. new album is incredible and it yep. seems like that competition is just creating better music and i think it's the same case for you guys with you and udo yeah, like it's just it keeps going now so yeah 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 <laughs> And the song Unbreakable, I mean, you talk about uh, One United Force, Metal Soldiers. For you, why why are metalheads so, so loyal? Especially, maybe now more than ever. They just are, man. It's amazing. Um, it's, the, it's probably the only genre of music that you don't grow out of. You know? Yeah, you I think we're the living you're, proof, yeah. You're a lifer. That's it. <laughs> and no matter where we go on this planet, 
you know your people when you see them. Yeah, that's true. You know, we're driving, let's, you know, in a transport from the hotel to wherever the gig is. And as you get closer, you just see more and more black shirts and long <laughs> hair and tattoos and, you know, band shirts. And it's like, yeah, it's my people. And you get out of the yeah, car, that's people. True. Yeah. I always said that the safest place you could ever be is at a heavy metal concert with true fans. Because mm -hmm. everybody knows each other, feels the same, they're there for the music. Yes, so. exactly. We're all, you know, one big happy family, man. When I was a kid, you know, I didn't want to go to the punk rock clubs. I wanted to go to the metal clubs. I didn't, because they were too violent on the punk rock side, but everybody took care, care of each other at the metal clubs. <laughs> yeah, now you're, now you're going to mosh pit and... <laughs> well, I don't go. I don't go in the mosh pit though. No, those days are over. I'm too old and brittle at this point. Yeah. <laughs> we'd have to call an ambulance. What has always been your challenges to tour the U.S.? Wolf is based in the U.S. You're based in the U.S. You would think it'd be that much easier, right? To 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 tour you the would. U.S. You would. It's just we don't have that kind of following in the U.S. that we have everywhere else in the world. So. uh you know the money's not there. It's wow. it's it's rough. Wow. But we are I we are going to make a run this year, and uh, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, that's what we're wondering. We're if there's yet, but it is in the works. Okay, so North America or yes. just U.S. Uh, North America. Okay, good. So, good. so, so U.S. and Montreal <laughs> or Toronto or Toronto. <laughs> I have not seen the final schedule yet, so I'm not at liberty okay. to say okay. anything. And none of that's been in, in, announced. So I got gotcha. you. We, we'll right. play that by ear. Right now, we're working, you know, we have South America uh, in May, uh, summer festivals in Europe, and a European headline tour starting in October. So somewhere between the summer festivals and October, we should be doing a U.S. run. Okay. And, and you know, not only the great lyrics on this this album, but how the voice, you know, you, you explained to me it's a muscle, you got to take care of it. But, you know, we're all aging and it's, you're, you sound just good as ever on this album. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And it, it is a muscle and we are all aging. But, you know, I'm, I still go to the gym, too. You know, I'm not going to if you don't use it, you lose it. And I think that's yeah. that's the key to it right there. If you keep continuing to sing and pushing yourself to do it, then uh, it'll, it'll continue to work, hopefully. You know, I mean, let's, let, it, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> let's hope that's the truth. <laughs> so far, so good. What are the toughest songs for you to sing today live? Are you still? Oh, boy. There are some tough ones, man. Um, Breaker's always a challenge. Um Zombie Apocalypse has been the opener for the last couple of years, and that's coming out of the gate with that is a, is a chore. But wow. yeah, you get it done. So uh, I'm really glad we do it that way, that we have done it that way. But now that'll be changing up. Now I'm sure that Humanoid album's out. We'll see. We'll see what wonderfulness they're going to make me do first. <laughs> so what's the dynamic with you and uh, you know Wolf? How does it go about the songwriting process? It's it's totally every song is different. Um, like uh, uh, some of the things on these, especially these past two albums, Humanoid and Too Mean. Uh, a lot of times, I just wrote lyrics to nothing and send him the lyrics, and the song would come back. Wow. Uh, or he would send me a piece of music with nothing but a title, and I'll write the lyrics and send it back. So it could be. You know, and then uh, Martin Motnick's been involved in the songwriting on the last two albums. Thank goodness. And uh, he's comes up with some good ideas as well and lyrical ideas. So um, it's it's a it's a collaboration. You know, that's all I could say. And it's and it's not done until it's printed. You know, yeah. we, we will work. We will tweak things right to the very end until it goes to mastering so that's great yeah wolf also offered jokes that you know being german it's almost near perfection has to be achieved before something's put put away yeah, yeah. 
especially with Andy, man. He, Andy's he is a perfectionist. It's, you know, I I just watch his face when I'm singing, and I know when he's going to go. Mm. I think you got a better one in you, mate. Yeah. Oh God, come on. Do you miss Peter Baltes as a songwriter? I mean, he was a fixture for so of long. Course. Yeah, of he's course. a great guy. As I said, though, you know, uh, Martin Motnick has stepped up and uh, become that guy right now that, that we, you know, brings in ideas and we bounce them off of him as much as each other. So uh, it's it's uh, just tough shoes to fill. I know it all is. about that, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's tough shoes to fill, but, you know, you got to man up and do it. Heads man, man up. up. And let's say a, a big high five for uh, Nobody Gets Out Alive. I mean, I think that's probably the most 80 sounding song on the album. Yeah, I, I really like that song, too. That's that, that's another one. I wrote the lyrics before the music. And I was really, really happy with the way it came out. You, you know, it's amazing. You've become the classic era now. You've been in the band <laughs> so long, right? Because there's usually think the... about it. I've, uh, on a steady run, I've been in the band longer than Udo ever was. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I remember, you know, when you guys were, you guys first started off, it was, it just, it, it doesn't seem like yesterday, but it seems like a long time ago. It just really yeah. does. In a good way, in a good way. I don't mean in yeah. a bad way. But I mean, it's 15 years went by pretty damn fast. I imagine yeah. so. Yeah, that's for sure. And lots of trips around the world and, you know, it's crazy. You still doing electricity? Still I electrician? retired last year. Oh, oh really? congratulations. Uh, 2023 i called it called it quits just basically for more more reasons than not is just just too much to handle uh, with uh, the logistics of getting work and and benefits and you know i'm retired now i don't think about benefits anymore i got health insurance for life oh that's uh, good that's great uh, i didn't as long as i was still working because if you're not, if you don't have enough hours, then you had to pay Cobra, and Cobra payments now are up over a thousand dollars a month. I'm like, oh, yeah. Why don't you pay me instead, and I'll stay home? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. So there you go. So in other words, union wise, you officially retired at that age where you could keep on collecting, right? Yes. You could. Yeah, keep I had enough. I have enough years in. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah. collect a pension from them now, and uh, and. I I still have my health insurance. Well, my Medicare, obviously, because I'm a yeah. freaking old man. But but that's my secondary, and they cover everything that Medicare doesn't. So you get to concentrate on music. That's great. That's there great. Yeah, that's a nice problem to have. Well, it's a, it's a nice problem to wake up in the morning and go. I have, no, I really don't have to go there today, do I? I can stay home and do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive Mark. a few lyrics uh, down yeah, and uh, well, squirrel them away. Walk for a walk. Do, do you guys still have any contact with Gabby? Uh, my wife and I do. Okay. Quite she okay? She's good? Yeah. She well? My wife and Gabby are very good friends. So I, we, sorry, Gabby and myself, we're, we're all good friends. Yeah. So. Good, 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 good. She used to like, you know, uh, she was a huge supporter of the show, you know, uh, and I know that she's retired now and uh, just... Uh, Give her our best wishes. That's all. Yeah, yeah, got yeah, most certainly will. Lovely lady. So yes, she is. Yeah, yeah. Well, well Alan, you got anything? anything? No, just uh, you know, we're, we're talking about all these albums, and you say it's a little bit harder. I mean, when except with your your era, except I mean, they started out gangbusters, and and again, all the albums are charting. Uh, it, has there been a little low that's making it a little difficult to tour North America, or? I mean, it's yeah. always been difficult to tour North America. Uh, it's mostly promoters and uh, the fact that you know you you we need to play at least a big enough room where we're going to make some money, but you got to have the turnout to do it, you know. So, uh, but we're going to make it happen this year, no matter what. I know that we've all decided that you know um, if we if, if we have to. Uh, Take a cut. We'll take a cut, but let's. We got to play. We got to play for the fans. So, you know, I mean, Montreal. You know, we we interviewed Blackie Lawless, and he, they were telling him for decades that ought to, there's nobody there, nobody's going to turn up. It's no interest yet. Yet he sold out every place that he played when he finally came back. So hopefully go. that'll be the well, case. Maybe this we've been time. away long enough, and that'll 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you, no trouble selling tickets in South America. No trouble yeah. selling tickets in Europe. Yeah, or, or else. So it, it's. I think it's just the the United States is is just not metal territory anymore. Um, Whoa, I don't know why. It, it's well, Adrian Vandenberg was. Just, we had him on a couple of weeks ago. And he was saying the same thing. It was kind of a test drive for him going around yeah. this tour, but the reaction was so strong that they're going to do a full tour down the road. His agent oh, believes let's hope in so. it now. I, yeah. I hope they prove. I hope they prove me wrong. You know, I mean, I I would love not, nothing better than to to tour the U.S. You know, every year, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Well, just so you know, in Canada, balls to the walls. I think went gold. Like I mean, yeah. Canada has always been a strong hold for accept in general, your right. era, Udo's era. So uh, hopefully, the promoters will see some value in that and book you guys. I hope so. Well, right. I, as I said, there's there's definitely going to be a, a run in. I'm going to say late August through October. So, uh, yeah. and I can't I can't really say any more about it right, right. now. All right, yeah. all right. It's all not right. confirmed and it hasn't been announced, obviously. But there's it's going to be going to be very interesting, Bill. You know, on a last note, I remember when you played Toronto and uh, Jason McMaster, he, he yeah. took over for you because you were sick for a few days. I was more Which... than sick for a few days. I had RSV. Oh, wow. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Fucking evil. I'm telling you. And I was singing through it. I, I had sang four shows already with it. I mean, we had been out on, on, on that run for a, a few weeks already. But I got sick, I think, in Colorado. And I sang that show, and then I sang uh, like two more after that. And I woke up on the bus in Toronto, and I couldn't breathe. Oh, seriously. I, was, I literally was laying in the bunk on the bus, and I I, uh, I had to cough. I'm going, shit, I don't want to cough. It's, I know it's what's going to come up, but okay. Uh, go ahead, cough. I went to take a breath, and nothing went in. I was like, uh, whoa, 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 what the f what the hell is that about? And I jumped up out of the bunk and I'm like, calm down, dude. If you couldn't breathe, you would have died in your sleep. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So just <laughs> calm down, breathe through your nose. Okay, that works. That kind of works. I couldn't talk. I went up to the front of the bus and I and they're all sitting in the lounge. I walk up to the front of the bus. I'm like, there's no fucking show tonight. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And Went to the hotel and they got a doctor came in and and he pumped me up full of uh, freaking cortisone. Cortisone, yeah. Trying to get me to and and he pretty much said, he goes, dude, don't you you're gonna kill yourself. Don't do it. It's just your, wow. your vocal cords are are like this big. That's why oh. you breathe this morning. Oh so crazy. So I missed that show. Then uh there was a show in New Jersey two days later that they canceled. And then Jason did the Penn's Peak show in Pennsylvania. And then we were supposed to do, there was three shows. There was two in New York and one in New Jersey, all the same promoter. And the, and the promoter got wind of what was going on. And he calls the management and goes, if Tornello doesn't show up to these shows, I'm canceling them. Wow. I'm like, you, I, I, and I came home. I was home by then. And my wife's an emergency room nurse, or she was at that point, and went down, went to her emergency room, and they ran a full panel on me, and I had, they, you know, test me for COVID and shit. And I had you, I had RSV. It was, I don't wish that on no one. I've had COVID three times. That was shit compared to this. Oh, wow. <laughs> this was this was nasty, man. And they were going to cancel the shows, and I said, well, I can't let that happen, can I? So I got in the car and I drove to upstate New York. And Jason and I split the night, and we did the same thing in uh, – there was three shows like that. There was two in New York. There was one in North Jersey, and then he went back to Texas, and I played the uh, New York show, New York City show. It was, it was nasty. Yeah, wow. the cortisone usually the, the cortisone usually takes about five days to kick in. You yeah, know, to reduce well, the well inflammation. it's going to take the swelling down, hopefully. But – it's, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, bro. And trying to sing with it is even worse. I mean, because you, you know, it's it's not it's not working. So you're yeah. trying harder, and you're literally just beating yourself up. 
That's how Robert Plant lost his voice completely. It, it, is he, he, he was sick during the Led Zeppelin tour and he kept going out, he kept going out and he just, to the point where he just abused his vocal cords. And, well, and I did that made it worse. in the early days of, of TT Quick. I was really sick and I didn't want to cancel any shows. You know, I'm, put, I'm putting 10 guys out of work if I cancel the show. So uh, I'm not going to do it. So we played, we played, we played, and it turned out I had walking pneumonia. Um, went to a party, smoked something I shouldn't have after a show, had a coughing fit, and my lung collapsed. Oh. <sighs> so I was in intensive care for 10 days, damn near died. Uh, and, of course, I'm night people. I'm in, int in intensive care, and they keep bringing in. I'm, I'm awake all night. I can't sleep. Everybody they put in the bed next to me died. Oh, oh geez. Geez. You're kidding me with this. I got to get the hell out of here. I need a beer. Shit. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but uh, it worked out. And that's how, and that's what made me quit smoking, actually. It was, that was 1980. So I quit smoking, what, 44 that's, years ago? Wow. And this is the pressure they put on singers because the <laughs> singer is too sick to play. Everybody's out of work. The band's losing money. Yeah. And that's where and that's where they push the singers to use backing tracks to go, look, just fake it, fake it. You yeah. know, we're not gonna lose I'm it. And that's that. that's the that's the pressure. That's the pressure they I put know. on singers. But it's not fair. Yeah. Uh, it's not it's not fair to the audience to be doing that. It's not. I, it's I not. Think. And uh and yeah, it is a lot of pressure. And and the thing is too, is you know, you guitar player breaks a string, he can he can change it. Somebody changes it for him. Break a, break a drum head, put another drum on there. You yeah. Break the shit, it don't come back yeah. until it heals. So, so well, there was no permanent damage, or do you find any no. notice to your voice? Uh, no, no. Good. I think it, come, it usually comes back stronger when something like that happens. There you so, go. Wow. Oh, it sounds like it on um, this album. The, the whole thing with the collapsed lung, when I left the hospital, the, do the doctor said to me, he goes, oh, you're a singer or something, right? I go, yeah. He goes, you don't sing anymore. I go, oh, oh my, <laughs> my beer. <laughs> like 45 years ago. Yep. On that note, you yeah. are definitely a humanoid, my friend. You are definitely, yeah, yeah. or you're heading that way, or Frankenstein. I don't know one or the other. Frankenstein. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be released April 26, Napalm Records. Is there any closing remarks you'd like to add, Mark? Uh, the, the second single, which is... Uh, the Reckoning. Thanks. The Reckoning. Reckoning comes out Wednesday, day after tomorrow. Okay, there we go. So video and, and single. So by all means, check that out. The album uh, is on April 26th. And other than that, we'll see you on the road. Mark, finally let's, letting go. Finally letting go. Mark let's, book, let's book this in the calendar. 11 years from now, we are going to have this. <laughs> <other card. laughs> okay. That's a, that's a, that's hey. a plan. <laughs> Mike. Always a pleasure, and I'm glad you're feeling good. I'm glad you're looking good. You're strong. Thank this you. album's unbelievable, and the voice sounds great. And just another another quality release from Accept, what everybody expects from you guys, and you deliver. Uh, thank you so it. much. Yeah, Greatly appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys. Yeah. We'll keep our fingers crossed. All right. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Mark. All right, guys.